She's a force to be reckoned with. Her life has been dedicated to serving her community and country. Nancy Lombardo wanted to do things other girls didn't. At 17, she joined the military as a police officer. The military, it's kind of funny. When I was a kid, I used to watch MASH. And you know that little scene where you see the females running, you know, in the beginning? And I thought, oh, you know, I just, I always wanted to be that female that did something different that other females didn't. And when I became, when I got on in the military, I was actually the last WAC unit, the Women's Army Corps unit, to go through Fort McClellan, Alabama, before they incorporated men and women. After actively serving in the, the military the for three years and in the reserves for six, Nancy made the move to become a civilian police officer in 1988. Well, I originally started off as a patrol officer for 15 years, you know, the, the whole in your car thing and patrol work, and then I became a detective in um, our special operations section, kind of like special victims if you want a comparison, and um, I worked on narcotic investigations, um, sex offenders, child pornography, and then child pornography segued into human trafficking. Nancy's job was tough. She knew that she had to be equally as tough, especially in her circumstance. Section was all man, men, and I was the only female, and when the position came to, uh, for the sex offender position, we had uh, over 100 and, at the time, 125 sex offenders in Lawton, Oklahoma, so I was responsible for monitoring them solely by myself. Yeah, it was a lot of work and a lot of contact with them and a lot of interviews with them and a lot of in-depth um, knowledge of, of how they thought, of how they reacted, how they acted, how they re-offended. And the opportunity arose to start actually finding the people and putting them in prison, like the human trafficking and the child pornography cases specifically. Um, so I was assigned to the Internet Crimes Against Children. It's a nationwide incentive to catch these predators. Nancy was one of the first human trafficking officers and when her work helped to define the term. I, I got on the human trafficking thing right before they even understood what it was. You know, this now, you know, the words like put out there all over the place, but a lot of people don't really understand what human trafficking is. And we had to develop what it was back in the day because we had one of the first um, units, the human trafficking units that was formed. Her work wasn't easy and oftentimes was overwhelming. I worked one of the largest um, child pornography cases in Oklahoma at the time four years ago. I'm sure they've gotten bigger than that. But when you're looking at thousands and thousands of images of children and child pornography, you're just so overwhelmed because you see all these pictures and you know there's all these victims and you're like, where are these victims at? You know, and it just really just, it takes over everything about your yourself as an individual. Um, so it's hard for me to know that there were so many victims out there that I couldn't save. She says her experiences made her fight for justice. I am a survivor myself of a rape, a very, when I was in the military, and I really felt that that um, fueled me to be such a, um, a fighter for children and for women. Nancy is still a fighter for her fellow police men and women. But I recently just um, went to training for um, Talk Saves Lives. It's uh, part of the American Foundation of Suicide Prevention because, um, as you know, police suicides are on a huge uprise. As for being remarkable, well, she put it quite simply. I think all women are remarkable. And actually, I think what makes you remarkable is not to be in the spotlight and to do things and, and not let people see it. In Chautauqua County, New York, Emma Rose Lewis, YourEerie.com.